Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Welcome back, everyone. We're helping you today. We want you to reach your goals, find positivity, good stuff in your life, but you have to reframe what you say and how you say it. So today we're going to center on words we should never use. Words we should never use. And I just thought of this. Never is probably one of those words. <laughs> it is, right? Uh, she is an amazing life coach that helps you move life forward with Phoenix Coaching. It is Coach Michelle G back on the program. Hey, Michelle, how you doing? I'm good. Staying warm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's definitely you're up in Canada. I'm in the New yeah. York area. Yeah, we were just trading temps before we got on here. And very uh, similar. So yeah, they are yeah. very similar. I thought it was like much colder up by you, but uh yeah, you know, it, it's I winter. Mean, we do have a wind chill, and I don't know what that is, but oh the okay. wind makes so, it colder. Yeah. So you you were holding wind chill as the secret weapon to talk <laughs> me even more. That's what it was. Yeah. All right. Exactly. So, that was yeah. my plan. Yeah, it's it's, it's 30 degrees by you, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but windshield. Mm, all right, that's going to take it down to, you know, like uh, 20, 19 degrees, but it's all good. It's, it's winter. <laughs> and you know what? We know on the other side of winter, it's going to be spring. It's going to be warmer and yeah. just feel so much better. And on the other side of your words is positivity if you use the right words. Same thing yeah. with affirmations. I know some people think that's all like woo woo, foo foo. What you say and what you feed yourself really does happen in your life. Uh, and I'm just going to say just personally, not about me, but I used <laughs> to say certain things yeah, even in the last 12 years. And I had an epiphany, I don't know, maybe like six months ago and all those things, and they were negative things mm. and they all came true. Ah, because I would say these things and I would just believe that, you know, this is the situation. This is it. I would say it, you know, yeah. until I figured it out. I was like, oh, well, you know, you kept saying that and you became that mm -hmm. or the situation became that because it was the same language you were yeah. using. So we're looking at words today and words that can reframe things in a more positive light. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I love, like, I love this topic. It just makes me happy because it's just, it's such a simple thing that can drastically change your life. <laughs> it's very true. Yeah. yeah. It, and it is, it, it needs to become a habit. You need to yeah. catch yourself when you say these words. It's like, oh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm going to change that to another yeah. word. Um, one just popped in my head. I, uh, I try not to say we have a problem. We have a problem. Mm. It's, we have, we have a challenge. We have yeah. a challenge, you know, it's, and it's not like we're softening the language. It's just in a more positive light because problem is just so heavy. You know, why yeah. do you want to live in the heaviness there? And I love that you said that because a lot of words that we're probably going to talk about, I don't know, but a lot of words, when you have the one you normally say, and then you find another one, I always get people to be like, just sit with their body and see how they feel saying them. So yeah. in that sentence, you said, you said, I try to, and I'm like, oh, Steve, that's one of our words. <laughs> it, it is. It really is. Tr and try so, is one you shouldn't yeah. use. So what do we replace that one with? So try, I usually do like, I will. Um, I'm able to, mm -hmm. yep. uh, depending what it is. So like, I'll try to go for a run today. It's like, okay, I'm committed to going to, for a run today. So say you're going to do it. Yeah, exactly. And the you thing know. that why I don't use those words. Okay. I do sometimes, but why I work on not using those words is because it takes away like the personal responsibility of the outcome. So like, say like, I'll try to go for a run today. You've already given yourself an out to not mm. do it. <laughs> Non-committal. Non-committal. Yeah. Yeah. So like if it starts to rain, you're like, oh, I don't want to go right now. If it was sunny, I would definitely go for a run or like something like that. It just it takes the responsibility out of it instead of being all in, being committed, saying yes, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And when you look at what you're saying, when you've reframed it, it yeah. actually is much better. And I'll, I'll give an example in an email in a moment. But here's one. I'm challenged by. You're going to start an email, you know, maybe it's a little more formal. It's not, you know, just a friend to a friend, yeah. Yeah, you know, business connected. Do you want to greet them in a positive way? I hope things are going great for you. Hope. 
I hope it's, you know, once again, we're not committing to something, you know, I hope it's okay. No, change it up. I trust things are going great for you. Yeah. Uh, what what word? You know, I'm, trust is a good word. It's a yeah. little it's a little formal for me, so I try to find the try. There we go. Uh, I <laughs> I search for a replacement for hope. Yeah, oh. I've I've caught yeah. myself using hope a lot. Like I hope you're having a good day. Um, what came to me when you were suggesting things is like I believe I believe you're having a good day. Or even just like today's a great day to have a good day. <laughs> like, right. You don't even have to personalize it. You can yeah. even say, let's say the weather's nice out. Yeah. What a beautiful day. Um, I trust you're enjoying it. Whatever it might be, just you know, yeah. throw it out there instead of hope. Not that hope's bad. We all should have hope. Yeah. We all should have hope. But again, it's it's it it it's almost like you're not committing to something right you know? just and take, take the next step just with hope there's hope the noun and hope the verb say that again hope the noun and hope the verb so like internally you can have hope you can have like believe you can have that like positivity whatever like i have something that is hopeful it's awesome <laughs> but when you, you put should. it into a verb of like i hope this is going to work out exactly right it's a completely different situation right right yeah. it it's it's almost as if you're questioning it and you shouldn't yeah. question it it's it is what it is it is oops <laughs> i i nailed my camera um <laughs> here's one that we should absolutely get rid of no matter what hmm. but yes not good yeah right away it's it, there's a block up there's a negative when you say but and I, yeah. I sent an email today regarding a website mm -hmm. and I have a marketing company. So we're suggesting a landing page okay. and it was the current page of this person is way too splashy, but I wanted to reframe it in a more positive light in saying that we need to mute the image a little bit Okay. instead of saying, um, or, or the image is great but we need to mute the image a little. Mm. So that image is great. It really is. Yeah. A little too busy for what we need to accomplish. Right. So I said, and it would be even better for this purpose to mute yeah. it slightly. Yeah. So, and is a great replacement for that one. You know where you can learn and from? Mm. Children. When children yeah. talk, there's never any but. It's always... Yeah. I, I went to the store today and they had candy and they had ice cream and I had a great time. And there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. And I love, like, I just love looking at kids because I feel like as adults, we have so much to learn from them because we've gotten rid of that, like, innocence. Yep. And how, like, I know this is going a little off topic, but, um, or and, <laughs> um, kids, uh <-huh>. like, <laughs> right? I was like, cut that one. And <laughs> kids, let themselves experience their emotions and as adults we push them down we hide them we believe that we can't show anything but strong and so when you look at a toddler they can go from crying to happy to playing to sad all in like instances because they're like okay i'm feeling this i'm gonna feel it now i've let it go i get to move on <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and as yeah. adults we wallow in it yeah and we don't let it go. I know. <laughs> how about how about these now? Things that, okay. to reframe. Yeah. I have to go to work. Oh, yes. It's my favorite reframe. It's not necessarily about work, but the have to. Yes. Yeah. So um, I get I, I get to go to work today. I get to. Yeah. And I was I got a massage a couple weeks ago. Not to brag, but um Thank you. I'm going to make an appointment for Saturday. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. Anyone go get one self care. I love it. Uh -huh. Um, And I was talking about, cause my partner and I are doing a lot of renovations. We have been all through the pandemic. It seems never ending. Um, And the next step, well, the biggest step is to put in a sump pump. So I was, I was telling my, uh, my massage therapist about this. And I was like, we get to put in a sump pump. And she's like, I really like that. You said get to, and I was like, well, we don't have to. But if we want our apartment to stop flooding, 
we get to put this in. <laughs> Even on that level, what if you couldn't? What if, you know, it was a uh, ancient sacred burial ground and right. you couldn't, you weren't able to put a sump pump in. Yeah. Is that just all hypothetical? Yeah. And what? So it's Find a positive. Else to do. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. it's a, it's a positive thing. I get, we get to put in a sump pump. Yeah. Um, it's or or this one and this is a classic one and some people will be like mm, come on but i can't believe this happened to me no mm. this happened for me yeah it's not two but four yeah yeah and when you think of it that way there's a lesson in everything that happens yeah it's if you and i know it's hard to look at the positive in things but there is a positive there there yeah. is you know, Absolutely. Learn and move on. Learn and live. Yeah, exactly. And I love it because everything is happening for you, whether it's telling you don't keep going down this pathway because it's not meant for you. Or as you said, there's a lesson in it. So it gets to build you into more of who you are, whatever it is. And I know those situations aren't always easy to be like, well, it happened for me. <laughs> like it can still hurt. It can still be painful, anything mm -hmm. like that. And at the same time, you don't get to be victim to it either. Yeah. And saying it happened, not necessarily saying it happened for me, but instead of saying it happened to me, you kind of get to release the power it has over you too. It's not easy. And it's yeah. not that we're saying to minimize what happened. And we're, and it's not a way to just, you know, sunshine, roses, lollipops, yeah. and butterflies. Hey, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the worst thing that ever happened in my life. But yeah. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, there is some positivity in it. And I, I, I firmly believe things do happen for a reason. There's yeah. things, you know, you might not see it right away. There's a plan somewhere. I don't know, you know, universe made that plan, whatever it might exactly. be. Um, if yeah. you're open, and we've talked about this, if you're open to the signs, I got, I, you know, not to go into detail, but it was you know, a half hour ago, I just yeah. got a weird sign from the universe mm. and um, dealing with something with an attorney. And I said, do you realize, you know, what just happened there? And I gave, I, I, I gave him ex facts. I deal in facts. Yeah. That. And he's like, I can't believe that. You know, this universe <laughs> stuff is, is wild. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I, I can't make that up. But it was, it. it was all presented that way. Yeah. Um, again, I deal in facts. I'm a skeptic just like anybody else. But <laughs> when these things happen, then it's, hmm. I don't know what the message was in this situation, but this thing presented itself. And it was, you know, wow, how, how I ironic coincidence maybe not it was a date a date that came up that was okay. very uh pinnacle and um, yeah. it was weird actually i was actually <laughs> laughing at it but you know i don't know what it is you know right. um one in 365 chance of this particular date presenting itself in this whole situation yeah yeah you yeah. can go you can go with that or you can look at it what are the chances of that happening at that time yeah exactly uh, you know I, I i lean much further on that side because it just doesn't happen you know right and you can look at it as it's a good thing or you can look at it as a bad thing every single circumstance situation has both sides it just is, it depends what you choose to look at so like you said you can look at it and choose to be like oh well that's neat that that happened or you can look at it as if like oh that yeah. was the worst timing possible right <laughs> like, right yeah or you know that was just a coincidence and, yeah that uh, doesn't know, mean anything doesn't yeah. mean a, what, what does it mean sometimes i don't know right <laughs> you know, you know, maybe down the road you figure it out or yeah. it's just kind of a weird kind of thing um, exactly what are some other words i'm trying to think now so uh, yeah one that came up to me so i think we've talked about this before and just the power of the words i am mm. um but like, I have come across a lot of people who, who say, well, that's just who I am. And something that I've been able to reframe for myself is up until now, up until now, that's who I've been. And hmm. because when I feel people say, well, that's who I am, they're committed to not changing. They're committed to be like, well, this is an excuse as to why I'm showing up this way. Like, this is who I've been. But we can choose a different path at any single moment. So up until now, I've been shy. Up until now, I haven't been confident. Up until now, whatever. Even if it's just habits or goals, like up until now, I haven't succeeded in following a workout plan. But right now, you're a different person than you have ever been before. Mm -hmm. And now is also a powerful word too. 
because yeah. it's in the present. Exactly. And it's funny. I always remember when you said I am back in the day, the group, the black eyed peas, mm. you know, with, um, with Fergie, the, the, yeah. will I am is one of the guys in the group. Right. And, and he went solo too. And every time I used to hear that, I'm like, Hey, he's kind of pompous, yeah, but now <laughs> I get it. You know, I am is a powerful statement it where, is. you know, what are you? Add, add words to that. You know, I ask yeah. anybody right now, what are you? I am strong. I am resilient. Yeah. I am going to overcome that situation. Exactly. I am going to win. Yeah. And, and I, and, and I am. <laughs> exactly. Kidding. Yeah. It has, it has its power to it. And kind of on another flip side of the, I am statement, um, talking about things that can be temporary in a way so like a lot of people like i am depressed i am overweight i am fat instead of i have fat i'm experiencing depression i'm experiencing anxiety because in that way when you say i'm experiencing or i have it's something that means it doesn't necessarily have to last forever instead exactly. of i am depressed i am anxious it's like well that's who i am Instead yeah. of not giving yourself any other way to look at it. I, that is powerful because the I am statement is a definitive one. It, yeah. That's it. And if yeah. you're experiencing something, doesn't mean you're going to experience it forever or for exactly. a long period of time. And not to yeah. minimize it, but if you if you say, I'm experiencing depression, you know, mm -hmm. if you look at it on a smaller scale, hey, I just had a, a heavy meal and I'm experiencing some bloating. You know, yeah. it's not going to be there forever. It was just after that situation. Exactly. Um, and if you say, you know, I am bloated, you know, okay, for the moment you are, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean it's going to last forever. But it's also yeah. psychologically uh, even proven where you say I am. It's like you're, you're creating the yeah. statement of your life. And exactly. why would you want to commit to, you know, anxiety? Yeah, things that don't make you feel good. No. Yeah. But using the I am or I'm is yeah. you're committed. You're locking it in. Why do you want to? I'm, a, you yeah. know, I'm going through, I'm going through some depression right now. I'm going yeah. through some anxiety, whatever it might be. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, when you start thinking, th the thing is remembering, and I have friends that yeah. they'll speak to me and they'll catch their butts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they'll say, but, oh yeah, I mean, and. Yeah. And, and I think it's cool. Like it's just on their, you know, on their yeah. radar that, you know, they, they thought of it. And it is practice, of course. And if you have a partner or a friend that you see all the time, you can always ask them, be like, hey, if you catch me saying this, can you let me know? Mm -hmm. Because we don't always catch it. It's just who, how we sp have been speaking. <laughs> you caught me in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, because <laughs> you're so used to doing it. We're yeah. so used to doing it. Any others that you can think of words that we should find um, alternatives for? I don't want to say never use. Yeah. Yeah. Because we will use it. It will come up. It's a, And as soon as we say never do this, then there's a judgment attached to it. Mm. Um, but something that comes up for me, is like the word hard, like, oh, it's going to be hard or this is hard. Um, one of my clients was talking about his training and how he knows it's going to be hard. It's going to be like it's going to push him to his limits. Um, he said a few other things, but like, as soon as you're like, well, this is going to be hard. Like, think of how that feels in your body. Like even me just saying this example, I'm like, oh, that doesn't feel good, but we can change it to challenging, or this is going to be a great growth experience. Or what if it's not going to be hard? Like, I always love questioning it and <laughs> be like, oh, it's going to be hard, but is it <laughs> like, does it have to be? We don't know. No. Um, but it's right if away. I get the visual when you say that word. Yeah. It's like hitting the button on the power window and now you put the window up mm. and now you can't even get outside. You can't put your hand out the window or anything. It's already yeah. going up and that's, you've already locked it in. Why do yeah. you want to do that? Exactly. It might, it might not, you know, benching, yeah. you know, 350, whatever for somebody might not be hard. Right. You know, it might not be, and it might be challenging and that's okay. Because in that moment, like new things are going to be something it might not be hard, but new things are going to challenge us. And mm -hmm. being challenged is not necessarily a negative thing. No, you got to look at it as a positive because I, I picture myself on a bench and yeah. let's say whatever it is. I'll just use that as an example. 
yeah. attempting to lift a weight that I've never lifted before. Exactly. And even if I only did one, it was like, mm -hmm. that actually felt pretty good. You know, I'm doing the visual. Yeah. Wow. Pull that one off. Try to do the second one. A mm, little bit of a challenge there. Maybe tomorrow yeah. or give me, give me, you know, give me a minute. Give me 30 yeah. seconds. Let's go back into it. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And, and life, well, we can say it, life is hard <laughs> sometimes. It, it presents us with obstacles and challenges. Absolutely. And those are great opportunities to either learn something about yourself, um, to improve and grow your resilience. It's a great opportunity for growth, for proving yourself wrong even. So if you're like, I've done this before and in the past it was hard and you're like, okay, have I learned? Have I grown from it? Can I do it now? Right. Yeah. How about the clients, some of the clients you work with, mm -hmm. some fairly elite athletes. <laughs> yeah. And what do they, what do they struggle with in terms of their mindset? I always love to get into somebody's head. Yeah, um, a lot of it is internal pressure of having to perform, of making sure that everything's perfect. And as well as because there's a lot of there is a lot of pressure on athletes from non-athletes like us watching professional sports or from coaches or from scouts or whatever it is. Um, and I find that a lot of athletes is like, well, I need to be perfect to do this. I need to be the top athlete when in reality don't necessarily have to be. <laughs> hmm. And it's like, I find I've, I've spoken to retired athletes too. And they're like, I took myself out of the game because I couldn't keep at this level of pressure. But then they acknowledged that it was coming from themselves, that they lost the joy of what they were doing, the joy of their sport and themselves in it because they felt like they had to be a certain way. Hmm. Yeah, that's a shame when you work so yeah. hard to get to a certain point and then you don't progress because this got in the way. Yeah, absolutely. And like um, a client the other week, like we just talked, we talked about his wording. And I was like, hey, did you recognize this is how you describe your training? He's like, oh, no. I'm like, does that feel good? Does that make you want to get out of bed and train? He's like, not really. I'm like, okay, how do we get to reframe that that makes it feel good for you? And then the next day he had a training session and he's like, it was like a huge shift already. He's like, it was one of the better training sessions I've had recently. Mm -hmm. And like just a simple like change of words and how you look at it made a big impact because now it's like, I get to be challenged. I get to grow instead of, oh, I have to work. It will be hard. It will be tiring, all that kind of stuff. Do you ever do this or do you suggest it with some of those clients, yeah. a visualization? Because I think I, of, yeah. right, like if I'm going, I didn't go to the gym today, been a couple of days, yeah. but when I think of going and sometimes it's not, you know, not super fun because you're tired or, you know, yeah. you just, yeah, I do it. Yeah. But I think of the flip side, I think of the times where it was really good mm -hmm. and I was on some cables doing triceps and I got into my zone listening to music yeah, and like nobody was around. And it was just like, it was just like, man, it felt good. And I can even think of some of the songs that I was listening to. And it's like, yeah, I want to go back to that. That was, that was a good time. Yeah. Or the feeling that you have once chemicals are released in your body after a workout, it's just like the feeling of accomplishment, the yeah. feeling of, you know, attaining a certain level and not like I'm a gym rat or anything like that, but yeah. it's just a certain feeling that you have. Um, does that, you find that work? works Absol yeah i find visualization is a very powerful tool no matter who you are whatever you're doing but visualization is very powerful because it gets you already in the end goal yep and basically working backwards so just sitting with so like with athletes going into a competition like get them to sit and just be like okay walking into the stadium arena wherever it is the venue imagine yourself walking down the hallway walking to the room what are you saying to yourself? Are you listening to music? What's the environment like? How are you interacting with your fellow athletes, with your coaches um, when you're getting dressed for it? What do you put on first? And like really going step by step so that yep. they have already imagined exactly how they want it to go. And not saying that it will go exactly that way, but more times than not, it tends to go in that direction. Absolutely. I visualize yeah. everything. Yeah. Maybe obsessively sometimes. I don't even know I'm doing it. I don't even go to a party 
mm. until I visualize it. Okay. What's it gonna What's it gonna be like? Do I really want to go? Who's gonna be there? Hmm. So what was, are they gonna be wearing? What's that gonna be? Kind of a flip side to that one though, because I've overthought myself out of like conversations and situations. Because I'm I'm not, like, well, now I don't need to say this because I know exactly how it's going. I I know what you're saying, and it's not to psych myself out of okay. going. It's to visualize what it's gonna be like. So okay. I have I have an expectation of what it's gonna be like. I'm going. Okay. Okay. I'm definitely going. I just but, want to make that distinction because like Yeah, you're right. There's there's times that like I'll visualize a conversation that I get to have. Yeah. And I can go through the whole thing, create the whole conversation, get my answer, and then I'm like, okay, I don't have to have this conversation because it's gonna end like this anyway. Yeah. When in reality I have no idea and my brain usually goes to worst case scenarios anyway. <laughs> of course. We're all wired that way. It's it's yeah. it's supposed to. But the exactly. visualization is just, you know, you're better prepared for it. Let's say you have a big yeah. meeting. You know, yeah, I'm going to a meeting. Exactly. I just I went to one last night. Hmm. You know, what should I wear? You know, it is casual. Yeah, I don't have to worry about that. I could wear that. All right. Now who's gonna right. be there? You know, if they ask this question, how should I respond? Yeah. And it's not like it's it's more of just like preparation, really. Yeah, exactly. And really getting into the feelings of it too. Like, That's how right. am I gonna be feeling? Because right. it's easy to get nervous and it's like, okay, is that what I wanna feel? No, how do I wanna feel? And I love it because you can do that about like, well, what if it doesn't go the way I want it to? So you can always visualize a plan of like, well, if we didn't win that game, am I going to throw a tantrum? No, I'm going to then look at work, didn't work and go from there and grow and go forward in empowerment, figure out a different way to get it done yep. instead of beating myself up about it. And you, you know, final thought on what you just said, is like super powerful, Michelle, in, yeah. in doing the visualization, visualize the positive stuff. Yeah. Instead of oh, I'm going to be, I'm going to be anxious. I'm going to be embarrassed. What am I going to yeah. say? Is this, should I be even wearing this? I don't know. No, focus on the positive things and it will be that way. You'll go yeah. that way. Yeah, I know it exactly. sounds cheesy, but <laughs> that it works that way. That's just how it is. Yeah, exactly. Know? And focus on building yourself up, like empower yourself through this thought. So like, yeah. how do I want it to go? Not how do I not want it to go? Because you, it's, you're steering the ship. You're driving yeah. your own car. So if yeah. you start thinking, I'm going to, you know, go to a, you know, an event, whatever, party, meeting. If yeah. you're you're driving in a certain direction, you're thinking you're going to drive in that direction, you don't even know it. You're going to start making a turn and you're going to go down that direction. And that could be the road of negativity or anxiety. Yeah. So turn a car the other way. Why wouldn't yeah. you want to go? Exactly. You know, I'm going to take the scenic route. It's going to be fun. I want to go through the city today. Exactly. You know, where yeah. gonna... And kind of like bring it back quickly to our um word switching out and whatnot is I find a lot of people get very caught up in well this is what I don't want to do and this is who I don't want to be instead right. of taking it and flipping it into well this is where I get to go this is who I'm going to be and as soon as it's just like well I don't want to do this you're going to focus on that instead of where do you want to go and working towards that and that's the I guess we call it the baseline for manifestation yeah you know, think of the way you want it to be, not the way yeah. you know. We're just about out of time and we get to do this again. Yes, we do. <laughs> All right. Sorry, <laughs> reframe that. Uh, your website, phoenixcoaching.org? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're available to help anybody just kind of get through, you know, positive mindsets. Really, that's what we're talking about today. And and it's centered on your language. Yeah. Uh, and those words. Michelle, always great talking with you. You as well, Steve. Yeah, Thanks so much. Absolutely. And uh, up there in Canada, stay warm. <laughs> Thank you. You do. <laughs> all right. We'll talk to you soon. All right. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go, and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great 
barrier just knocked down. I mean, it's, it's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage-free, fully adaptive, handicap-accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit hfotusa.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's going to be okay.